as one often does, I sort of stumbled into this story initially. I was sent by the Washington Post, where I was on staff at the time, just to cover the catastrophe of tropical cyclone Nargis, which made landfall in Myanmar in Burma in May 2008. And at the time, no journalists were really getting into Burma. It was very, very difficult. The then junta was making it nearly impossible for people to get visas. I, at the time, was a, a rookie sort of between editing, copy editing on the foreign desk of the Washington Post. I was completely unknown. Um, so I went in and I was expressly told just to get the story of the disaster of what we knew at the time was 120,000 people who'd been killed in the storm surge from tropical cyclone Nargus partly because of the junta's neglect for years. And so I went to get that story. I was told to steer clear of politics. But the minute I arrived in Rangoon, I was so struck by what I had been told didn't exist, which is a sort of very low grade, quiet and very creative resistance from all kinds of people, from professionals in Rangoon who, of course, were living day to day, be they lawyers, doctors or just, you know, folk in the market who were going down to the cyclone areas and bringing food. This was a few months after Saffron Revolution had been brutally suppressed and people had been hunkering down, afraid of repression. But no, here they were reappearing, taking advantage of the chaos of the storm and the junta's neglect. The reason I wrote this book was because I was so inspired by what I saw. And I was constantly asked, often again by Westerners, often, you know, like, you know, you're bringing your ideas of human rights and, and, and you know, I'm not an activist. I was just a journalist, just a witness. And not at all. You, you didn't have to be educated at some grand university to understand the repression that they were facing. I always found it very sad that people didn't notice the degree of effort and struggle um, and success that a huge element of the Burmese population had demonstrated over years that there was this really persevering movement of people to bring about justice and democracy. I don't know a single other country out there that's had this, a sort of 50-year struggle that was at the time non-violent and that did actually for a time really achieve something. In part, it's because that new generation that were the most, you know, the bravest face in a way of this new sort of resistance initially in the streets, but th they all came of age in a moment of incredible freedom. They had the confidence to stand up and, and sort of act this way. And, and that was the great gift of of the generations before them. And so I just, I applaud the Burmese, the Myanmar, you know, population. And I know <laughs> it's even inside that they, they will continue and they will not give up, even if it, if they won't see the results in their own lifetimes. And, and I am profoundly humbled by that example. And I wish the rest of the world could have a chance to see it. And, and, and that was why I had to write this book. Um, I just, I had to somehow document in my small way, a piece of what I bore witness to.